Well, now's the time we get into habitat and uh, working on improving your land from last year. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, a lot of this we talk about, we talk about building buck beds on private land. And we're going to talk about that. And I want to really give you the nuts and bolts of the, the structure and the big picture for buck bedding and why a buck will bed in a certain spot, what you can do on your own land to get that. But at the same time, these same concepts of type of habitat, distance to does, distance to food, apply to public land too. And so a lot of these same concepts, we're not reinventing the wheel for where a whitetail roams, where he likes to bed, where he likes to feed, how he travels. It's just on private land, you're doing it in a very small package and you're working long hours to do so and uh, sometimes spending money to do so, different than on pri uh, public land where you're just going out and finding it. It might be on thousands of acres on public land and you're trying to install and shrink that 2,000 acres on public land down to 40 acres on your own land and private land. That's why there's so much strategy that's involved in a private land parcel, small parcel, because if you spook the herd, you spook your parcel, you're done for the season or you're done for a month or more, which is a season in most, uh, most people's cases. So uh, just a different focus, but same concepts. And number one, we're talking about bedding and I'm talking about quality afternoon food sources. Why is that? Quality afternoon food sources, what does that have to do with anything? Look at it in terms of extreme. A food source is the most risky area that a deer enters during the daylight. Mostly open, mostly hunter pressured. What attracts hunters the most on a property? Food sources. You think a deer doesn't know that? A big old buck patterns you way easier than you pattern him. You just have to wait for him to slip up and you have to hunt smart, very smart. And when it comes to condensing a movement on 40 acres or 80 acres, you have to be very smart because if you mess up, he just won't come back to your 40, 80 acres. We see that on properties that are nocturnal parcels for mature bucks. And not only are they nocturnal for mature bucks, but eventually after four or five years of that, those mature bucks don't even visit the parcels during the, night, the nighttime. Meaning the neighbors shoot monsters, they never even got on trail camera. Because the property gets such a stigma of being overhunted, overpressured, not having the ingredients needed for a reclusive old buck that he doesn't even visit the land anymore. And that's actually easier and more prevalent on private lands than actually doing it right. That's why we call it the 3% club of the people that actually do it right. PM food. If you have quality PM food that's unpressured, that starts to set the tone. Why? Because does and where doe beds comes first. That starts the positioning. When you have quality food and deer are attracted to it during the daylight, not talking nocturnal, but during the daylight, every single afternoon, hour before dark, 45 minutes before dark, half hour, whatever it might be, then when you have that food source, you have screening next to that food source, you can't see into it, deer that are on it can't see out, then those does and fawns will bed fairly close to that food source. They're the first line of, of bedders. So they're gonna bed 50 yards in, 100 yards in. Then those young bucks are gonna bed behind them because as the buck gets older, he wants to separate from those does. And then finally you have le room left over for a mature buck if you have that depth of cover. So the positioning of those does is critical on your land and food. Because if you have the food, quality food, and it's there consistently, then you have the does and fawns bedding consistently if they have cover and if they have that screening area. And then you might make room for some bucks left over. But if you don't have the quality consistent food, you don't have the quality consistent does bedding next to the food, then you're not going to have mature bucks bedding on your land no matter what you do to the canopy, what you do for your cuttings, what kind of diversity you have in those bedding areas, what size the bed is. If you don't do all this first, this layering effect, then you're not going to have bucks. So that's why we need to talk about it first. Then within that bedding area, now you have food, does bedding, and thus work on some buck bedding areas. What do they need? They need browse. Does and fawns need browse too. But that buck needs to feed twice during the daytime hour. The rhythmic, rhythmic pattern feeding feeders, that means they feed five times in a 24 hour period, every four hours, five hours or so. And does and fawns are the same. And that means they need some type of browse. They don't need apple trees. They don't even need white oak acorns. They don't need something that high quality. They need regen from hardwoods, shrub tips, and then briars and weeds. That's all they need. A high stem count, you look through the area, it's thick. There's a lot, of, a lot of regeneration. So that also offers cover too. So a good browse area offers good cover. And if you have good cover where you can see through it, there's a lot of these hardwood stems, shrub stems, and briars and weed, then you have good food. If it's conifer, 
grasses, not good food. So they have to have browse within that area. So once you have the food, the does and fawns, that screening in between, and then you have that browse area behind the does and fawns, now you start to have that area for bucks. But how do you get that? Well, you either have to install it, meaning if it's open field area, you need to install, install browsable shrubs, grasses for cover, switch grass is the easiest. Maybe you have a field of red cedar. Well, that can be your base cover, but then you need to hollow out pockets within that red cedar, totaling 50, 60% of the area or 40%, whatever it is, and you need to get something that's actually browsable in there. Again, it goes back to you still have to have the hardwood regen in the form of trees, shrubs that deer will browse on, maybe some pollinator blends or flowers, forbs, and forages like we sell in our Pure Wildlife Blends uh, food company, food pot seed company. The bottom line is you need to install it if it's more grassland, upland area, so deer have browse and cover, or you need to cut. And a lot of times we're starting with cutting to create sunlight. Do hinge cuts create sunlight? Well, sometimes. But a lot of times we're going back into open big woods, we want to reduce canopy. And those smaller hingeable trees are just a fraction of the diameter of the big trees that are blocking the sunlight. So if you hinge the smaller trees, now they don't get sunlight and they die. It's just a waste. We've seen that for people that pay to have that done. We've seen companies out there that create hinge cuts because that's what they think or the clients want on their property when really they need to reduce canopy first to get sunlight to the ground. So think of it as all boils down to sunlight. And the easiest thing to do is have a timber harvester come in. So if you have good timber, have a logger come in, forester, remove that timber, and now you have the potential for buck bedding in those areas because you have browse and the cover that it creates with that. You have to be mindful you know, I want to keep mature timber on my access, my borders where I'm blowing my scent into from stand locations. I want to make sure that I have good cover for those does screening in the food plot. And then I have to be mindful and say, okay, by positioning, this is where a buck will bed. Folks, it doesn't matter if it's a single bed, it's a double bed, if it's room for many, they're going to bed there. If you made single beds in a doe fawn group area, you're not going to get a buck to bed there. That's a big fad. It's just kind of funny, actually. However, if you make bedding opportunity where does and fawns should bed, they'll bed there. If you make bedding opportunity where bucks should bed, they'll bed there. But it's all about that positioning and that structure first to even get them there in the first place. And then finally, side cover is king. What does that mean? It means that's why a, an overhead hinge cut is such a fallacy. Deer are not hiding from birds and planes. They're hiding from each other and from you and from predators. That means that cover needs to be at their level, not our head level and higher. That means the browse that comes from those cuttings needs to be at their face value so they can actually eat food. So I call it side cover. Side cover is critical. Side cover can be a hill. It could be shrubs or bushes. It could be grasses. It could be hardwood regeneration. It could be briars, weeds. Bottom line is an area that keeps deer from seeing each other, predators from seeing deer, deer from seeing predators, deer from seeing you, you seen from deer. All those lines of habitat that create edge and side cover so that deer can't see through it. And like I said, that creates edge. And deer are creatures of edge, let alone all wildlife species. So when you're thinking, where would a buck bed? He's got to have that side cover. He's got to have browse, different types of browse. He's got to have that positioning effect. And I would say most of the time on an average private land parcel, that's anywhere from 150 to 300 yards, 200 yards to 400 yards back from that food source. That's where that buckle bed. When you get to big open public land areas, not only will he require a greater distance from does and food source areas, I'm thinking bait piles in the UP of Michigan. You usually find that buck three quarters of a mile to a mile back from those bait piles, not 200 yards to 400 yards like you would on private land. But not only do they bed that distance away, they're used to a lot of cover. They're used to having the opportunity to bed anywhere. And they're used to being predators around, especially on big, open, public land areas, especially the further north you go. So what you find is in where you get into a northern Ohio area, where you could put a giant buck into a deer bed that was screened so he couldn't see out in the size of a pickup bed, and he could only see 10 feet in any direction, 
that turns into 50 yards or 30 yards in a northern area where there's predators because he doesn't want to sit in an area that he can be pounced on by anything, coyotes, wolves, cats, whatever it might be. He wants to be able to look around and have that vantage point. So you see where the bigger the cover is, big public land, state land, even in Ohio where I've been to, Pennsylvania, they want to sit with a big view. And then where there's a limitation of cover or covers at a premium, say in northern Ohio where it's flat, you might have a 40-acre parcel, like I've been to, 46 acres between the two landowners, and that was the biggest chunk of cover within two miles in any direction. In that case, they'll bed right into a pickup bed size area where they can't see out. So always remember that too. But even then, it's still side cover. They can't see out of that area. Predators, deer, people can't see into it, and that's where they start to feel safe. If you combine that with browse, if you combine that with where does bed, and when we're cutting uh, big open canopy timber, you're looking for junk timber. I don't care if it's an oak, a maple, a hickory, an aspen, a box elder. The bottom line is you're looking for poorly formed trees, especially when it ta when you're talking oak, maple, double trunked, leaners, subordinates. Those are the non-timber species, and they're not adding any brows. They're not adding any type of nut in any way because there's no hard mass because they're not getting the full sunlight and so they're doing no good it doesn't matter if it's called a white oak or not you cut it down when you cut it down you start to get more sunlight to the ground and that side cover too and by the time that's where we start working in our woods here we look for the we identify the big non-timber non-logging giant trees that we can cut down get a lot of effects so you could go down you could cut five or six mature trees in an area and you just cleared a quarter acre of sunlight to hit the ground because you removed big, big canopy up top. And then you might find that you're not even hinge cutting. We only recommend hinge cutting on 15, 20% of all parcels because they, people just don't need it. Either they're logging or they're getting big canopy down first, which can happen. You can clear a half acre of big timber very, very quickly compared to a half, probably um, in let's say 45 minutes, half hour and clean it up a little bit compared to hinge cutting the same area that might take a day. So big difference in labor and risk by continually having to cut over and over again smaller stuff compared to those big big tops, let alone installing it on uh, private land or on uh, open field cover, where you just, again, it boils back to positioning and getting that browse available. So that's kind of the big picture and nuts and bolts of establishing and building a buck bedding area. And again, like I like to point out, if you're hunting on private or on public land, you look for the same things. Bucks need that afternoon food source, just like does and fawns, but the does and fawns will be bedded near it. And that eventually gives way to where there could be an opportunity for buck bedding. Don't worry about finding does first, then you'll find the bucks. They still need the same kind of browse, doesn't matter if it's on private land or public land. Look for these areas that have this diversity that you would otherwise install or cut on private land. And of course, side cover. A lot of times where you see blowdowns on, on public land, you can walk for a mile and all of a sudden you see a blowdown where a big wind shear went through and you'll, you'll kick some deer out of it because that was the only form of cover in that area and it allowed some browse. Look when you're out in the woods. It doesn't matter if it's private or public. Look for trees that are down. I like to show that to clients all the time. When you cut that timber, it's going to look like that right over there because that tree fell down three years ago, and look at all the browse that's right there. It's really cool to see, and it's kind of eye-opening, because a lot of times we're not walking around the woods during December scouting. We try to do that, obviously, and we're looking at client properties all year, but we really want the clients to notice that, because then they can take that picture, and it doesn't apply to the summertime, obviously. You can't even tell during the summertime a lot, but, boy, the deer can really tell in the fall by all those stems and shoots that are coming up in that area. And when you do that in a buck bedding area based on position, you're going to build better buck beds. Doesn't matter if they've been there during the summertime. We're looking at better buck beds for September through March, and that allow you to not only house and hunt bucks on your property, but, a, but to build a better deer herd in the end as well. I appreciate you guys watching the YouTube channel, but I don't know if everyone knows everything that we have to offer, whether it's on WhitetailHabitatSolutions.com, our website, our WHS Wildlife Blends, our seed company. Also, Instagram you can check out. I'm very active on Instagram, putting strategies on there, photos of what we do every day. Uh, much more active there than Facebook. But our seed, web classes, books, clients, 
articles. I have over 600 articles on whitetailhabitatsolutions.com, everything whitetail strategy. Of course, we have hats on there, and then make sure to check us out on Instagram again. But lots of stuff to offer. We're always coming out with new things, and this isn't the end of it. We have more things coming soon. Make sure to check us out.